What we have done is in the past 12 months, it has been a very critical time for us to complete all and the testing for the critical equipment and the item. And that has been successfully tested. So where we are now with the technology, we are stand as market ready for diffusion. So uh, what we're looking at now is to be able to share this technology uh, with uh, research technologies globally with our partners, uh, with our technology partners and uh, power industry groups. Uh, and through this technology transfer, we will then progress into uh, the deployment for new industry, manufacturing, capacity build up, and, uh, and obviously job skill and training and jobs opportunity and move on from that simultaneously, we then contribute progressively towards uh, mitigation of uh, climate change. Right. I mean, in the meantime, in this past year, there's been intense negotiations from what came out of Durban. We've had Rio plus 20, and we're here again in, in Doha. From a technological point of view, I mean, are you happy with the way negotiations are going, with the way that we're moving forward? I mean, and what, what do you expect out of, out of COP18? Oh, thank you. What we have seen, obviously, is there is uh, uh, there, there are two things. There are two things uh, very important is the negotiations of all the COPs. And that's between the mitigations and adaptations. And anything in between are all those mechanisms. There is a clean development mechanism, the REDDs, the protection, the contributions, the reductions, and whatever various mechanisms there. And here we are, hydro that emerges as a technology solution that will bridge the gap and will collectively put all those strings of various mechanisms into credit enhancements that will be then enabled for each of these projects deployed in all countries for an affordable electricity for all communities. That is the, the balance that we see to be achieved between mitigation, adaptation, and anything in between, the space in between. So, so your country, Hydro Plus, is contributing to, to mitigation and, and to adaptation. You're, you're involved in, in on both sides. Yes, we we from Hydro Plus itself is a technology that will deliver a full service infrastructure, electricity electricity infrastructure. But at the same time, because through this technology transfer, we will allow every countries to develop capacity build up into manufacturing of the plant and equipment manufacturing and also the training of new skills uh, uh, at the same time and obviously job opportunities for all. But most importantly, this technology transfer will allow every country to be able to deliver affordable electricity for all communities. And what, how do you find the mood here after a week or so in, in Doha? I mean, what, what, are the, what have been the positives, the negatives you've seen so far? I mean, specifically youth groups. I mean, what, what, are the, what is the role yeah. that youth groups, you think, have to play in, in, the, in the negotiation process? Right. Uh, the, uh, the why, personally, the youth are tomorrow's leaders. And their children are the future leaders. So the youth today, their voice are deserved to be heard. And it is for the government of the day to then make the decision in their wisdoms. But it is important to bring this youth today to be partake in this very critical information and decision-making process. Not necessarily everything's what they said is right, but it is important to give the fair considerations into the future. Because it is easy to say, you know, all youth today, you are only kiddos, but there are the tomorrow's tomorrow leaders and that we deserve to be heard. I mean are they getting that voice do you think? Are, are they being heard adequately? Well uh, they have not in this particular meeting. It is, it is the, the, the case of there have been sidetracked. The youth is considered to be the next generations that to next generation for them to make the decisions. But it is important that the youth today is future is tomorrow's leaders and the, any information any decision-making process requires their involvement because they're the one that will make the decision for the world for tomorrow. It's not today's generations. They were only putting the guidance today. So I think for the last 20 years, we have been actually bumping back and forth. I think it's important that the youth today, 20 years later, is definitely going to be tomorrow leaders.